so we're going to continue with this, you know, this blocking in method. Um, so remember, the first thing you want to do is uh, make that envelope with less, you know, between five or six lines, no more lines than that to make the envelope. Uh, and the envelope contains the whole object that we're going to be drawing. In this case, the, uh, the foot. Uh, and another, another thing I want to, to uh, add on to this process is uh, the idea of, of the, you know, like the line of action, the one line that represents the object. Uh, so what, it, what, what one line would represent this whole object? You know, it's a line that goes through here. And so you, that's, that's going to be the addition to this process. So that's, it's a line that goes right through, through the center here. And, uh, you know, this is a, a very light line that I'm doing here with, a, with the 2B function, right? Uh, and then you, you can, you know, you can look at this, let me get, a, get this other pencil here. Uh, See, yeah, I've got that line to help me create the envelope. And this one. So there we have three lines. Four. Five and six. Okay, so that that's gonna help me determine an accurate envelope for this. You see, right now we're, we're, we have, well, I have, I printed this out. Some of you might be looking at this on, on your computer. Uh, so being able to draw on here, it makes it easier, right? To find that envelope, uh, the accurate envelope. Uh, but when we move on to drawing objects, you know, real objects, uh, it'll be a little bit more harder to figure out that, that envelope. Pick up the camera a little bit there. And even even though I say like you know draw with with straight lines. Uh, see how sketchy they are. You always want to keep that in my house. How many times I go over it. And I'm, I'm going to try and make it a little bit bigger than, than this one here. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And into this, I'm gonna to start to, you know, like like I mentioned last time, you wanna imagine that you have, you know, some scissors and you're cutting it, cutting this big shape, cutting it into more accurate uh, representation of this drawing. But still, I'm a, the way that I'm gonna, to, to demonstrate what I'm looking at, I'm like, you know, there's this big gap here. I can cut this. Add one line and then this. So this one line gets broken up into two, one and two.
And the same thing with this part. I can do this and this. And then here, I can one, two, three. <clears throat> this part right here. Okay, so that <clears throat> that's looking good there. I like how that looks now, but I have to. I have to erase. Erase lightning. And I still have, I've got the main outline there that I can, that I can go by. Uh, and so I'm gonna work, I'm gonna keep working on, on the outside, on the contour, trying to make it more accurate uh, to this here, uh, to the drawing I'm, I'm copying here. So here I can make another line there. It's like I'm chipping away at it. So I do that so that it looks more, more like it. And that is still focusing on its angular quality, but starting to look more. More like the actual gone. Oh, you see here, I, I had cut through the heel, but now I can, I can add some of that heel back on there. And you see here, it was one line, which is this line, but now I can. I can break that up even more, even further. It was one line I made one, two, three, four, five. To emphasize this, these curves here. And then th remember this, I had this, this one line here. I'm, I'm gonna redraw this so that to explain what's happening here. Which is this line. So now I can do one, two, three, and four. It's down here.
and then I've got the total here. I can do one, two, and three. I'm just going to work all, all along the edge here. And see this, this line that I had here represents where all these toes line up. So I can like cutting into it. Are you still using a two uh, B pencil? Yeah, this is a two B pencil. Okay. Yeah, I'm just putting a little bit more pressure. I'll come back to this. I kind of there. I kind of got lost. Won't lie to you. I'll come back to. So there, I you know I I pretty much have gone all the way around it, and uh, I think this is what was throwing me off here. And see, these are these are the the longer line segments that I that I can see. Uh, you know, like I had one, then I had two, and then I had you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You know, see, it became eleven or twelve line segments here. Same same thing here. Like I had one line, and now it's one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So now it's gonna be kind of hard to keep track of it, of how many more lines I'm gonna add so that it looks like like so it looks like it's curving, right? Uh, but I'm I would advise you to refrain from you know curving your lines. Because one of the issues that a lot of beginning students have is making the drawings and, and their drawings look very soft uh, because they, you know, they are, you know, they learn the, to make a drawing, you know, you, you know, you make circle, you make curves. Uh, and to remedy, remedy that is to use a lot, of, a lot of line segments at different angles. So just tell you, so I'm not gonna use any any curved lines. So I'm gonna I'm gonna erase a little a little bit here. Yeah. And also, at, you know, I think at this point, I can maybe start to jump in here in, into the into the shape, you know, to separate the, you know, the line shadow here. Uh, yeah. And sometimes it's it's a it is a struggle to to twist your hand in a way that allows you to make those straight lines. It's, it is easier just to do this here. 
So that's what I'm like, you know, trying to figure out how can I, how can I do this? Uh, You see this straight line now, I see that it also kind of bulges out more, it becomes more, more curved. And one thing I'm, I'm gonna have to do is I draw these lines, which are preventing me from really seeing the drawing. I'm gonna erase all those lines that I did on this. I think they've, they've served their purpose. And if at any point you guys feel you want to ask me something, you know, you know, feel free to ask me. Like, what did like, you know, what happened there? What did you do there? So I think this I, I think I have to correct here. I think I situated myself a little bit better now. And see, also by doing this, this analysis of the contour, it gives you more, more detail to the contour than if I was just to do like this. Because I'm really looking at every turn that's happening there. And it just may, it, it'll make the drawing look like it has more information. With more detail. Can you see it? As I keep working at I have to make, you know, corrections. I think this has to be picked up here. I think I made this part a little too big. So every time I, I go over the contour, I keep correcting it. See how much I had to change this. I think this is not right. Also, this is looking kind of big. And 
that now I can I can go in here. It's starting to describe. The shadow shape. And see, like, there's a lot of zigzag in here. And before I do that, I'm just going to go and do this. Simplify it before I jump into the details. You know, it's, it's working, you know, it's, it's the idea of working general to specific. You know, the big shape, then the little shapes, then the small details. And it's also in breaking down this, this drawing into its uh, more manageable, uh, you know, sections. Always keep telling yourself that you know, general to specific. Big shapes and then smaller shapes. All right, so I know how that's looking. So once again, I'm gonna I'm going to erase. But even lighter, you know, I'm leaving a lot of the drawing here because I I think it's looking I think it's looking good. Like I said, like uh, before class, I I had intended to just focus on the shading, but I think it's better to start from the, because it's the beginning classes to really emphasize this process. I, I had drawn it over here as well. <clears throat> so I have two of them. And uh, see now, And keep making corrections here. This is looking too big.
says, you know, I, I look at this, I think it's too long. So I can make some adjustments here. You see where I started, and every time I've gone over it, I keep redrawing it and pushing it. So this is still kind of giving me a hard time. I'm going to try and go this way. It's not like I can now move this shadow. And see, when I started the drawing, like I was, you know, with the, the longer lines, and those lines, I was use, using more my shoulder, right? I'm just doing this. And as I get into the smaller lines, you know, I started using my wrist, and then eventually I started using my fingers. So it's, again, like the bigger limb, the whole arm, then the wrist, and then the finger, same thing as like, we start off with the big shape, then the smaller shapes, then the details. And see, also now I'm I'm looking at, at this whole shadow shape by itself. In a way, kind of separate from the rest of the foot. I think I can shave that down. Too much. Remember, you might want to make plans to be coming in next week. And it seems like every summer, every summer session one, we end up getting a lot of rain. Seems like this year.
See this? This shadow helped me get this. It was helping me get this a little bit more accurate. So like when I did the last time, like dropping lines or drawing lines, dropping lines vertically and drawing lines horizontally. So I could kind of make a grid on this. That's really kind of what I was doing there. I want to see where that lines up. I think it still has to be further up. The pinky here. there. It's the little detail that become more challenging. Like in this case, with the smaller How much I to take off. <clears throat> and see, there, there's a. Uh, I look at this space here, and I see that it's maybe too big here. And then I, I. I'm also, I, I found, I realized this as I, was, as I was imagining, you know, straight vertical line going on from this to as I was trying to place it. And see, like, you know, I come over here, and I'm gonna try and just freehand the straight line as best I can. Use a dark repression so you can see. I keep using this as a reference. Okay. 
take this measurement. See, I'm taking that measurement a little bit like that. Just to help me connect the dots. I want to do the same thing here. This might be devastating. I'll have to withdraw the whole drawing on this. I have to do it. So I'm, I have to make some corrections here. Not all these are going to be as bad as I thought. See all of this part, how much it sticks out, much more than over here. So I, I just got to trim some of this so it goes, it goes back. You see this? This shadow falls on on this side of this line here. And I, mean, I want to shade, I want to start shading, but I want this to be accurate. This shape's gonna get a lot smaller. You see, I can't erase all this. And there's no point in, in uh, saving it. It's not right, it's not in the right place. Now, uh, the drawing, it looked fine. I mean, I could have left it the way it was, you know. Uh, I guess it, this brings up the question of uh, what do you want to do with your, with your drawing? If you just, uh, are you comfortable with the level of skill that you have, or do you want to improve it? And by doing little things like this, and improve your drawing and your drawing skills. It's a matter of what you know. What do you want to do? What do you want to do with your? With your artistic training. That looks that looks better. See, I think now I can move on to shading and talking about, about value.
How many times have I drawn this? Again, you don't keep telling yourself, can't use any curving lines. It has to be straight line segments. Like that is this is too much. You see the trouble that I go that I go to to not make a, a simple curve here. Clean this up. <clears throat> Okay, I think I think that's good. Now I can start shading. And uh, so I, I gave you guys all these drawings about shading that you're gonna have to copy over the weekend. Uh, let me find enough space here for all these drawings. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase this one so that I can next to it. I'm, I'm going to draw a sphere. And explain the the light and shadow, and how and how that uh, relates to this, the light and shadow on this on this drawing. Let's move some things here. So you guys can see everything.
the this side. And you also want to, you guys want to do this as well. Circle. That will become a sphere. Okay, looks, that looks pretty good. Now the sphere, of course, you can you can do that with uh, with curving lines, of course. This is this is kind of like a diagram, so you can you can see what's happening. Uh, now on this on this drawing, we've got the light source coming from from this angle. Here, from, uh, This arrow is going to be that's the direction of the light source. So it's got the light, creating the light mass, and on the opposite side is creating the shadow mass. Now on my diagram that I have here, the lights on the opposite side. That's why I'm, I'm gonna move it over. And so then you have a, you know, you've got the light mass and, and then you would have the shadow mass. on this side. And see that, that right there, when I drew that line, it made this circle into a sphere. And why do I mention this? Well, because this becomes a cross contour line, right? And it, it describes the three-dimensional roundness of the sphere. And you can think of this like the equator, those longitude latitude lines across the globe. Okay, so now we're gonna separate it and you know, we're gonna create uh, the, uh, The shadow mass see that is the the shadow shape and just to speed it up I'm, I'm gonna I switched over to my ebony pencil, which is a darker graphite pencil. But I'm still gonna be using, you know, using both. Now the, the shadow mass is made up of the form shadow, which is this shadow that is on the object. And also the cast shadow, which is the, the shadow that is cast you know, by the object on, a, on the surface that it's resting on. And so these two combine and they make uh, you know, the shadow shape.
into my brush and blend them together. Now I want to make them really flat by making them very even. Like you always want to keep them flat at the at the beginning. I'm going to sharpen my the the blunt point is giving me a hard time to get a sandpaper. So when you guys show up on Monday, I'll give you guys one of these things. It's a sandpaper block. So you can sharpen your drawing instruments. Like I, like I mentioned, you know, when I was looking at your drawings, you wanna, you wanna use a 2B pencil. Now, I'm, like I said, I'm using this darker charcoal because I'm darker graphite just for the sake of time. But you guys uh, keep using, keep using your uh, lighter graphite. Also, I, I, I think I have enough pencils that when you guys show up on Monday, I'll give you a, I'll give everybody a 2B pencil. I think that looks that looks more even. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this on the on the foot here. I'm trying to just work on my skills here at shading evenly. That feels going over with just a pencil. And 
Call it blank. Reload pressure. And then at this point, you know, like if you look at the sphere, uh, there's very little difference between the, the form shadow and the cast shadow. Like I, I mentioned yesterday, the form shadow, its edge is going to be soft. And the cast shadow, it's, it's, uh, it's a sharper edge, but that, it does get a little bit, a little bit more soft as it goes away from the object. But right at this point, there's no difference between them. I'm just trying to show you like in a, a methodical way of going about shading. A methodical and organized way of shading. And see, this, this is uh, one of the issues I have with the uh, the darker graphite, that it tends to shade, but it looks very grainy. I don't quite like how it looks. I'm going to blend it with the brush, and I'll go over with a with a darker, with a lighter graphite. But it does help in in. Uh, Speeding it up. And most of the shading on this drawing is uh, form shadow, right? Because it's not really casting a shadow on any surface, except down here. See this, see how soft this looks here? This is, this is form shadow. And then it's casting a shadow on the toes. You can see there that's sharper because that is the cast shadow. But then that cast shadow merges with, with the form shadow on the toes, which are softer. So it, you know, it's uh, observing those details that will make uh, observing those details, and then addressing them when you're drawing will make the will make your drawings better. So blend. I get picked up that greasy spot there. I don't like that one. That's that's one thing like I mentioned, you know, like the the darker graphite has like there's more grease and it has like a no it gives the drawing like an oily, greasy feel to it. 
which I don't, I don't like. I'm gonna, it might take longer than expected, but I, I'm already kind of over the time for the class, so I might as well just make a nice drawing here. This is a 2B pencil. See, this gives me the this lighter graphite. I think makes it more even, more even value. See, I like them much better. You can tell the difference, the more graininess down here. I don't know if the camera can capture it.
Okay, at this point, it's just what I'm doing. It's just we're making it even. Making the value even, making it look flat. And the so the shadow mask, I feel like like I was mentioning, it's made up of the form shadow, the cast shadow, but within with within the uh, the shadow mask, there's also the reflected light, which will be the lightest part of the of the shadow mask. And then there's also what is the darkest part, which is the turning. That's a that is a tricky, most demanding part of the of shading the drawing. And that's what I'm going to start working on in a little bit. I think that looks <clears throat> that looks that looks much better. I'm just gonna clean up the drawing here. So look like on this drawing, I that's more detailed than the than the previous one I've shown you. But see, like here, I've numbered the the different areas, right? Uh, five, that area, that is the turning. That's the darkest part. Of the, of the shadow mass. That's what I'm going to work on. And it's tricky because you have to blend it. You have to blend it with this, with the light mass, and with the shadow mass. And see this? I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm gonna go over the oh, this separation. This area between the light and shadow and, and as I go over it you know crossing from the light to the dark you're gonna see that it starts to emphasize this area more starts to get darker Now it's not 
it's not a line. Like it, it right now looks very sharp because I'm I just barely started going over it. But it's not supposed to be a sharp line. You know, keep working on it so that it blends a little bit better. But I might go back go back over it with uh, some of the darker graphite. Now the drawings, the, the bar drawings, uh, let me just show you something here. The bar drawings, uh, all they have is, you know, shadow mask. So they have a little bit of the turning, very little reflected light. You see that, that area there that is brighter. And in regards to the shading on the, on the light mask, they only have pretty much just this value here, number four, which is called the dark lights. They really don't have the half lights, the light and the high light. And because they were, I, I believe, I, I think because they were, these drawings were used for beginning students that were starting their academic training. Uh, just to, not overwhelm them, overwhelm them with a lot of detail. Maybe that's why they they were so simplified in regards to shading. So now I'm, I'm uh, going over it with uh, the ebony pencil, and so that the turning it starts to. Uh, become more apparent. See, even, even there, it already starts to emphasize that there is a, a reflected light. I'm trying to blend it with the, with the dark lights. This, this value wraps all the way around the sphere. And see, the more I keep going over it, the, the uh, it builds up more graphite along this area, which emphasizes that turning. So when I see the edge very sharp, I go over it so I can, I can blend it. I don't, you want to see it, but not see it. You know, it's kind of, you want to know that it's there, but not 
to a parent. See there? And then it starts to make it look more round, more convex. And I also got to blend it into the shadow. And see, so it's creating that softness that is characteristic of the, of the edge of the form shadow. And it doesn't happen, uh, you know, right away. Like I've been shading on this for a while now, like uh, 2012. I don't remember I have another meeting I have to go to, but I, I think it's like one or like 12. All right. As an artist, uh, this is the fun part, the shading. So you see this, the turning become like a cross contour line. That emphasizes because it's wrapping around the sphere. It's emphasizing this uh, three dimensional form. Okay. <clears throat> I'm gonna venture a little bit more in, into the light mass here. And still, this is uh, dark lights. This is pretty much the dark lights. Here. And the sphere, it's round, right? So it gets, you know, the highlight somewhere there. And from there, it, it darkens. And even this edge over here, it's gonna get a little bit of shading. This edge is never just bright white because it's going away. But you see, when I started this, it was just a flat shadow shape. And just with focusing on the turning, see how much rounder has become. And then you have a uh, a reflected light. And then as it goes away around this edge, it gets a little bit darker again. But this dark value is not gonna compete with, with the turning. Or it, it should not compete with the turning. So you want this to look like it's closer to you. Like if you were gonna touch this ball, your your hand, you had your hand flat, you were gonna touch it. This is the area that it would touch the it would touch first.
you know, creates that area there of reflected light. And the cast shadow is sharper. I'm just going to try to emphasize here. And it's closer to the object. As it gets away, it gets lighter. You see? So I can, this. I can spend another four hours on this, just on the sphere. You see that, that's gonna help me now go in here. And so this is like a sphere, right? This, this is like a cylinder. You see the cylinder also has that turning. It has the reflected light and then it darkens it as it goes away, but it's not as dark as the, the actual turning. So I know that that turning is going to be right when the form comes into the light. So now on the camera, you, you can't see it here. There's a little bit of reflected light. And I don't know, depending on the quality of the image when you print it or how it looks on your screen from the PDF that I gave you. Uh, but there is, this is where you would find the turning. Keep in mind how flat it looks, but as I keep going over this area, I'm also looking at, at this over here. And like I said, there's a little bit of those dark lights. It seems to be like a contradictory term. Another way to think of the dark lines is those are the darkest values within the light mass. See that it's already make it's making the, the heel you know, stand out more. To a certain extent, you would have some of it here also, some of this turning here. Now, this is a very simplified, I mean, this is a very simple form, you know, perfectly round and spherical. The body, of course, it has the bone, the muscle, the skin, the nerves, the tendons that affect the, the, uh, the surface. Again, this is a little bit of value there that is the, that's just the dark lights. One of the darkest values within the light now. It's quite challenging to make sense when you're talking and drawing. It's like two different parts of your brain. So excuse me if I don't make any sense when, when I'm shaving. But I try and be coherent. See how that, that's standing up, that's popping up. And there might be a little bit of that turning there. And see, this is sharp, but that is cast shadow. It's this part.
You see what happened with shading? Now this makes my original value very light. I mean, and see, I I would have preferred to do this with a 2B, but it's, I think it would have taken way too, too long. And I'm going to say there's some of that turning. So first, you, first the drawing is very flat. I keep emphasizing the flatness of it from the beginning envelope to the block in to the clear separation of light and shadow. But then when you start shading in this regard, it starts to become very three-dimensional. in my the graph I start from. And then all these these folds will have a part that is uh, a little bit of a turning. Zoom in a little bit more. Well, now for, for uh, you guys in the class. I'll be posting the video. Uh, but yeah, this will give you, and this, this video is not, it's not an action movie, of course. You know, but it'll give you all the information that you need in the class uh, in regards to shading these drawings. You see, here is to separate this part, the heel from the, the lower leg. I would say this area here is also the turning. And then all along this edge here, this is form shadow. So this is gonna be this area here is a turning.
like this area. I mean, this is the darkest values of the light mass or the dark lights. Now these terms I, I learned from my one of my professors. And every book's gonna give you different uh, terms in regards to the to the way that the light is done. And people had some something called light logic. And did Caravaggio understand these in the same way? Probably not. But Velasquez. Probably everybody had their, their own terms. If you want to sharpen up the terms here. And see every toe. You know, this is the form shadow that it casts the shadow here. But this part of the toes, there, there's a little bit of turning. This will make them look a little bit more puffy, more con convex. And on the on the big toe, you do see you see that turning a lot more clear because it's so round. It looks more like the actual sphere in regards to its to the shading. So this, this should give you the basic understanding how to go about the shading. I'm not, gonna, not gonna be able to finish it totally. There's a lot of uh, adjusting that I still would like to do. And this fold here, a little bit of that of the turning as well. So that is very much like this, you know. The edge is dark, the reflected light, and the turning is darker.
Now, uh, keep in mind this. When, when I, in a demonstration like this, there's a lot of simplification for the sake of making a point, making a clear point to the students. So like here I can, I can see, I see the turning, some of that dark light, the reflected light. But if I had more time, I would push the values darker so it looks more like, like the original drawing. But it still maintains some of these uh, areas of, di of different value within the, within the drawing. And we'll keep working on this type of shading throughout the, throughout the class. See in here, there's some darker accents. Deeper areas where the toes find the toes meet the I have to come in here with the eraser and pick out that gap of light. And the drawings have some hatching. In, in regards to the outline of the drawing, make it a lost, a lost and found line like this. Don't make it consistent all the way, all the way around. First, it's more darker. Then it's a little lighter. Darken this a little bit more.
But keep in mind, these are these are those dark values within the light mass. It's shading, but it's not part of the shadow. So yeah, I'm, I'm coming to the area here where I think you can, you can stop for the day. Things that I'm doing here is that line there, that area of value. So remember, work on those notes. The shady notes and it'll, it will all make more sense. Okay, guys, I think I will stop it here. You guys have any questions before I... 
I stopped the video. Well, I can I can stop the recording here.